make a statement in this game so early on in the season. Florida historically has been known for their offense, but in the Gators season opener against Louisville, Dana, it was the Gator defense that really stepped it up. Sarah Resnick and Kara Trombetta leading the Gators in all things defense. I've been so impressed with Resnick in the cage. 11 saves in the Gators win versus Louisville, where she was able to held their attack to under eight goals in their 14-7 victory. That's really impressive. Kara Trombetta, fifth year defender and leader in front of Resnick. She's the quarterback of the defense and will look to stop some of those Carolina sharpshooters this afternoon. As you said, the Gators will need a repeat performance there to win because there is a four-headed monster awaiting for North Carolina. <laughs> That's right, you cannot talk about UNC without talking about Katie Hogue and Jamie Ortega leading the UNC offense in all things. I've been so impressed with what they're able to do on and off the ball, not to mention involving Wareheim and Scotty Rose Brownie in the goal production versus Stony Brook. 11 goals between the four of them in their 14-7 win for Stony Brook. That is impressive. They'll have to be stopped today by the Florida Gators defense. Jenny Levy is synonymous with Carolina lacrosse, 26th season as the head coach of the North Carolina women's lacrosse program. And she is one of the four winningest coaches active in this sport, Dana. Jenny Levy, such a stature for this UNC women's lacrosse team. You know, her leadership is key. She's got so many great young women who play for her and has done, just done such a good job for the Carolina Tar Heels. On the other bench, Amanda O'Leary. She's the only head coach this Florida program has known. I think we've got a theme here this afternoon. Amanda O'Leary, again, another impressive head coach. She spent time at Yale and Maryland before her coaching tenure at Florida. Just done a great job with the program since its inception. Florida and North Carolina, common non-conference opponents through the years. The Gators program beginning in 2010. This is already the 13th all-time meeting between these two programs. They've met a couple of times in the NCAA tournaments, including back in 2019. Carolina has won nine of the previous 12, but Dana, the last time these two teams have gotten together in the regular season in Chapel Hill, the last two meetings have gone the way of the visitors. We mentioned it in the open. I mean, going from Stony Brook to a Florida team for UNC is huge. I mean, this is a competitive matchup and both of these teams are really well deserving of it and they'll look to make a statement here this afternoon. Shannon Kavanaugh of Florida against Ali Mastriotti of North Carolina for the opening draw, and it's won by the Gators and Brianna Harris. We are underway with a top 10 matchup on a Friday afternoon early on in the women's lacrosse season. Talking to the Florida coach earlier this week, she mentioned the first thing that she mentioned was the draw and how important it is to get that possession for a really good Tar Heel team. Florida won 13 of the 23 draws against Louisville in a 14-7 win on the road on Saturday. Both of these teams, coincidentally enough, posting 14-7 victories in their openers when the Carolina defense forces a turnover on the initial Gator possession. Kerrigan Miller with that initial ground ball pickup. She'll get it back in the midfield transition. So impressed with her at USC, and now she's doing such a great job for the Tar Heels, really making her mark in the starting lineup. Somehow, some way, the rich get richer, Dana. <laughs> Kerrigan Miller, the top-rated recruit in the class of 2016, opting to come to North Carolina as a graduate transfer and has earned a starting spot immediately in the midfield for the Tar Heels. An excellent player. She wears number 18 in the Carolina blue. Florida's in the black today. See the Gators in a man-to-man -man defense. This is different from what Carolina saw against Stony Brook. Stony Brook primarily a zone team. Would expect a lot of man-to-man -to -man today. It's something that Coach Levy mentioned when we spoke to her is Florida's ability to really put that pressure in the man-to-man. -man. You can see them coming out so high outside of the 12, and that's to really try to rattle Carolina, who's really poised in their attack. It's a Tar Heel team that scored 14 goals, as we said, in the opener against Stony Brook, a game that was played in some really adverse conditions. You see the sun poking through a little bit here today. That game on Sunday played in temperatures in the 30s, overcast and rainy. Low clock situation here for the Tar Heels. And an early stop on that man-to-man -man defensive approach for the Florida Gators. Ground ball pickup for Sarah Resnick, the goalkeeper. It's a great defensive opportunity for Florida. That's huge. You gotta have some momentum going into that transition. That's exactly what Coach O'Leary wants from their defense. We mentioned transfers in Kerrigan Miller of Carolina. Here's another for Florida, number 38 in black. That's Paisley Egan of the Gators. She's a transfer from Boston College. 
She'll be a new face for Florida, but she's already making her mark so early on in the season. She had two goals in their game versus Louisville. So already starting to prove what she can do for this Florida Gators offense. Brianna Harris takes the initial shot of the contest that will result in a shot clock reset. Florida will keep As soon as a Florida player is entering the eight meter, they've got that quick double. It's really making it hard for them to see that shot. So here come the Tar Heels in transition. Miller bringing it front side for Carolina. And after the transition opportunity isn't there, the Tar Heels will pull it back out and go to work on offense. Both teams really patient in their attack. You saw it from Florida, those long possessions, really waiting for that best shot opportunity. You can't rush a shot when you're playing a team like Florida and vice versa. Scotty Rose Growney, the senior, looking in front, and Miller misses a shot off to the left. That's a great look inside. I actually don't know how she saw that. She thread the needle right to Kerrigan Miller. Couldn't get the shot off, but they'll get that second possession, something they do so well. Katie Hogue, the all-time leader in assists at North Carolina, wearing number eight in blue, gives it up as she does so often for Jamie Ortega, number three. Carolina's leading goal scorer. Brownie turned aside by Resnick. Offensive rebound down to Hogue. Again, Resnick covers it up. It'll be a crease violation. I don't even know how Scotty Ward Brownie caught that ball initially. <laughs> that was impressive. So still scoreless over five minutes in. In this top 10 showdown between the Tar Heels and the Gators. by Emma Trenchard. Kavanaugh got it on the doorstep there, but was unable to get off a look. Ball loose near the end line. Possession will go the way of Carolina. You can see how much each team wants to win. They're so competitive. Gra ball is on the ground. You've got a two Florida girls and two Carolina girls just swarming the ball. Possession is so key and will be so key in this game. Brooklyn Newman brings it up the field for the Tar Heels. And Dana, we talked about those extended offensive possessions. Is that something that's a factor early on in the game? The team's just trying to feel out the opposing defense? I think when you have two really talented teams like Carolina and Florida on both ends of the field, they both have strong offense and defense. You gotta be careful and you gotta choose wisely when you do take the ball to goal because the transition is lethal. Both teams have really good transition opportunities and they always have been. It's like a program history. So I think you've gotta be careful and you've gotta be conscious. First free position opportunity of the game for Carolina. This is Elizabeth Hillman on the eight meter. And instead of shooting, she opts to pass it back to Brooklyn Newman. That's a good decision by Hillman. I think, again, what we were just talking about, taking the opportunity to realize, do I have the best shot or could I pull it out, work it around, kick it to others? Like Kerrigan Miller, Hillman, a former number one recruit in the country. clock stop here. Looks like the referee is signaling three seconds. So as a Florida defender, you can't hang out in the eight meter without a girl. You gotta be within a stick's length. So another free position chance for the Tar Heels. This is Newman again on the eight meter. And again, a pass to Hillman. Hogue looking for a teammate. And yet another Gator foul and another eight meter free position, this time for Scotty Rose Grounding. That time it'll be shooting space. When you put Scotty Rose Grounding on the eight meter, that's dangerous. Grounding's first free position attempt of the season. She goes hard to goal and puts the Tar Heels on the scoreboard first. Scotty Rose Brownie strikes from the eight meter. She's got such a quick first step and that's what makes her eight meter so legal. She does a great job of lining up. You can see she's got a great angle to go and just takes that quick first step, puts it off side stick of Resnick. Really hard to save. Great shot, great first goal for the Tar Heels. Senior out of Berwyn, Pennsylvania. Notches her third score of the season. And that 
Tar Heels starting attacking quartet, accounting for 11 of the 14 goals against Stony Brook last week. Dan, are you all surprised it took over seven minutes to get a goal in the early stages of this one? Yes and no. I think, you know, we spoke on it earlier, but both defenses are so strong. Florida knew what they were getting into when they came to play this game against Carolina. They've scouted Carolina well. They know the sharpshooters. So I think that's a testament, and that's a win if you're a Gator defense so early on in the season and so early on in this game to hold Carolina that long and just score one goal 22 minutes in. So back we go to the draw. Kavanaugh for Florida against Mastriani for North Carolina. We said earlier Florida won 13 of the 23 draws against Louisville. North Carolina only had a one draw advantage against Stony Brook, 12 to 11, but it's the Tar Heels that win this draw. So now draw controls even at one. Elizabeth Hillman won the Hard Hat Award for the Tar Heels. Last time out against Stony Brook. Jenny Levy telling us that she was recognized for her hustle and grit. Another stoppage here. What do you see, Dana? It's hard to tell with the masks on. <laughs> it's either offsides, extra player. Let's see if we can't figure it out. No lip reading in this no lip reading. era of lacrosse during a pandemic. It might have been something to do with the shot clock because they haven't repositioned any of the Florida players. Offsides is having more than seven players inside your attacking restraining line or more than eight players inside your defending restraining line. And they do take significant time off the shot clock. So I think that was the stoppage there. Trying to get the shot clock adjusted. It wasn't 82 when they blew the whistle. It took about 20 seconds off. Hogue fires high over the end line. It's a great inside move for Hogue. She loves that. That is her MO. Good job on Florida defenders to try and stop that. They'll get that third possession now. So on the low bouncing shot miss from Caitlin Wurzberger, the number one recruit in the class of 2020. Wurzberger playing against her home state team, number 13 in blue, is a native of Delray Beach, Florida, and gained a lot of media attention prior to ever coming to Chapel Hill. Very much a highly touted recruit out of high school. She had over a thousand points for her in her accumulation of her high school. That is so insanely impressive. Sports Illustrated in a story about Wurzberger you see behind the cage right now evoked another former Tar Heel by saying she's the Michael Jordan of women's <laughs> lacrosse. Passes in front to Miller and another save by Resnick. Resnick coming up big against that shot from Kerrigan Miller. That's got to pump you up if you're Florida. You know, UNC has kind of dominated the possession so far. They'll get a nice chance to transition. And that transition game is going to be critical for both teams, isn't it, Dan? I'm shocked to see that neither team has fast, has done a fast break thus far in the first half. That is surprising. Both teams are really good at it, but I think it speaks to, you know, the pace of play in this game against two really big opponents. Sloppy pass there from Florida. That is an unforced error and a turnover. If you're Armando O'Leary and the Gators, that's not what you want to see. Absolutely not. Those small things that may not make a difference when you're playing not the number one team really hurt you. Against a team like Carolina, they're able to easily transition it down the field, take a breath, work the ball around. Now, Florida has some experience beating number one. They did so on the road against Maryland last year. That snapped Maryland's 86-game home win streak. It's Florida's first win over a number one team since beating Northwestern back in 2012. Ortega, quiet so far, finds Mastriani to double the Tar Heel lead. Mastriani with the shot. Senior midfielder, I've been so impressed with her. Co-captain, she's been contributing on the midfield since her freshman year. Ali Mastriani puts the Tar Heels up by a pair early.
North Carolina leaving Florida early on, two to nothing. Top 10 matchup on a Friday afternoon from Dorrance Field in Chapel Hill. The Gators making their way north to see a North Carolina team that is returning all 12 starters off of last year's squad that was 7-0 and when the season was prematurely halted due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And now we have a timeout before the draw control. Gators and Tar Heels featuring two of the winningest active coaches in all of Division I women's lacrosse, Dana. It's so impressive. You look at this lineup, Cindy Timshall, Chris Saylor, Jenny Levy on the field today, Amanda O'Leary and Julie Myers. I mean, this is the helm of women's lacrosse. They've been there since a lot of the program's inception. It's really impressive. It really just speaks to the growth of the sport and what the women's lacrosse game means to so many people. And Jenny Levy, all of those wins coming at North Carolina, Amanda O'Leary has split her victories between Yale and Florida. She was the head coach of the Yale Bulldogs, hired by Florida in 2007, and has led that program since its inception in 2010. Nine conference championships in Gainesville, a Final Four berth, then only the program's third season in 2012. How about Sarah Resnick in goal for Florida? She's a redshirt freshman, but it's her third year in Gainesville. So impressive for the Florida Gators. I love watching her play. She's got a quick first step, and she's really getting tested by this Carolina offense, doing such a good job so early in the game, so early in the season, and only two years of playing under her belt. 34 saves for Resnick in the contest, and that's keeping Florida in this one because Dana, Florida's turned it over three times to Carolina's one, and it's been those turnovers that have negated any chance of Florida's offense really getting going. It's hard for Florida to really find that rhythm, like you mentioned, with those you know, limited possessions and those turnovers. It's really hard for your defense to always be playing on the field. You've got to give them a break, and you've got to really take care of the ball on your attack. Resnick, one of four Gators to win a preseason award in the American Athletic Conference. Florida sweeping those awards, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast. Brianna Harris, the preseason attacker of the year. Shannon Cavanaugh in the midfield. Kara Trombetta, the fifth-year senior, preseason defender of the year. And Resnick, the preseason goalkeeper of the year for the Gators. Now after the timeout, we'll get set for the draw. Mastriani, who just scored a moment ago for the Tar Heels, her third goal of the season against Shannon Cavanaugh. Fourth among active Division I players with 244 draw controls in her career into play today. And not only can she dominate on the draw circle, but she puts the ball in the back of the net, and that's really hard to do as a midi. You know, you've got to play defense, and then you got to go and score. She's really impressive. And she scores a whole bunch, just the ninth Gator all time to score 200 career points, and she did so in 51 games. Roughly four points per contest for Shannon Cavanaugh. But it's the Tar Heels who win the draw and go back on offense. The goals so far for North Carolina coming from Scotty Rose Growney off the free position. And it's Growney who looks inside. Another save for Resnick. This one at point blank range. That's got to make you feel good if you're Sarah Resnick and you just stuffed Katie Hogue. Hogue part of that dynamic duo. Katie Hogue and Jamie Ortega. Veterans for the Tar Heels leading the offensive attack, but so far they've been quiet. Now we'll see if Florida can take advantage. Florida with another opportunity here on their attack. They'll really need to make something big from it. They've got to put a score on the board. Got to stop that momentum that Carolina has. It's a Carolina defense, Dana, that held Stony Brook without a goal for nearly 24 minutes to close out Sunday's game. That's impressive. Carolina defense is all things impressive. You know, it's all about the details with them. They do so many of the little things so well that makes such a big difference. You watch their footwork, you watch their vision, their communication, it's all connected. Their slide package is connected. They know when to send the slide almost before the girl even takes it to cage. And look at that, a fourth turner over the contest for the Gators. It's caused by Caroline Wakefield, the fifth year senior from Centerville, Virginia. Now Trenchard in transition, the defender bringing it up.
something that the Florida coach mentioned when we spoke to her earlier was the ability to stop Carolina in transition. We can't let them get their hands free. And so far, the Tar Heel offense has not worked in transition. Like we talked about, no real fast break looks for either team today. Newman draws the foul. Newman to the eight meter fan. Jamil's already with a free position goal from Brownie earlier in the contest. Newman drives. And Resnick turns her aside again. She kind of shot it into the stick of Resnick. You know, she did all of the hard work, you know, getting that first step off those Gator defenders on her right and left, but she just didn't fake enough. Resnick was able to track it. Great save. They'll transition up the field. So a sixth save for Sarah Resnick. And I think it's fair to say, Dana, she is single-handedly keeping the Gators in this contest. I would absolutely agree, especially when the Carolina Tar Heels are getting put on the eight meter. That's like a free throw. That's a really hard save to make if you're a goalie, and she's doing an excellent job handling that pressure. Last offensive possession for Florida. Ended in their fourth turnover of the contest, a cause turnover by Caroline Wakefield. Now Kavanaugh. Thought about a roll dodge there, opted to give it up for Harris instead. It's great defense by Carolina. You gotta watch them off ball, how they work and how they communicate with one another. They're always helping their teammate out. They're always talking, communicating, whether it's physically pushing their slide. They've got it all figured out. And like you mentioned a moment ago, that's the details. Jenny Levy told us the difference between good and great, it's all in those little details. Yeah, you watch their nonverbal communication. That one slipped through. Slipping through is Grace Haas. First goal of the game for the Florida Gators is the third of the season for the senior from Baltimore. Grace Haas does a good job. She recognizes the opportunity that she has. She gets off that backside. She's got a clear lane to goal. Nothing really Taylor Marino can do about that one. Carolina sent the slide, and Haas you see it plenty of space right in front of Moreno. A little bit of a miscommunication. Katie Woodruff, someone who's been a solid contributor since her freshman year on D. She's got the hustle. She just must have been a miscommunication in some way. Grace Haas able to slip behind her. 93rd career goal in her 50th career game. Haas on pace to become the 13th Gator to 100 goals for her career. Six preseason all-conference selections on this Florida roster. So the save leads to a goal for Florida. Closing on the halfway juncture of this first half. It's like her goggles. <laughs> her goggles slipped off her head. Put those back on. Another draw win for the Tar Heels. Brownie, one of those 12 returning starters from last year's team for Carolina that was 7-0 at the cancellation of the season. Ortega steps inside the fan. Look at that double team from Florida. And look at her poise. She's got two Florida girls on her and she doesn't lose the ball. Mastriani nearly coughs it up, gets it back. And earns another free position. UNC's had a lot of opportunities on the eight meter. I think if you're Florida, you know, going into halftime or if you have another timeout, you gotta make that adjustment. You can't put them on the eight meter. It looks like they got Whiteman for a shooting space violation. She doesn't really like the call. Either way, Mastriani on the eight meter opts to pass to Hogue. Good decision by Mastriani. Kick it to Hogue, work the ball around. You got plenty of time on the shot clock. Hillman going to work. Again, walled off at the eight though. Good defense by Florida. Mastriani now, defender slips. Another shooting space. That's a good decision. She drove in, realized that she had players on her, did a little roll, realized she was alone, caught the Florida Gator shooting space. She'll get back on the eight meter. Now with a 
lower shot clock. Let's see if Mastriani goes hard to goal. She does, but misses wide left. UNC will get that extra possession. Shot clock is reset. So they've got almost a full 90 to make something happen here on the attacking end. Look at the shot disparity. Carolina has taken seven more shots than Florida. The only reason why this is a one goal game, Sarah Resnick's six saves so far. Another Gator slips, shot hits the post. Another reset of the shot clock. Three possessions. This is tiring for the Florida defense, isn't it? If you're the Florida defense, you need to get the ball out of your defensive end. You gotta give it to your attackers. They've gotta score a goal to give you the ability to breathe for a second. It's hard to play defense for this long against the Carolina offense. And the Carolina, as we've talked about throughout the broadcast, is being very deliberate offensively. Very patient. Wurzberger behind the cage. Freshman for Delray Beach, Florida. Looks like Trimbetta will get called for the foul. Mastriani slips. Hogue looks in front. Ball loose. Bodies everywhere. Haas picks it up and it'll be Gator possession. That was just a really hard 50-50 fight for the ball. You can see how much both teams really want it. There's bodies on the ground, there's sticks on the ground. You know, this is a 2-1 game. This is anybody's game at this point. We're still in the first half. That's a really good point because it feels like North Carolina is controlling this game because of just how much possession time the Tar Heels have. But when you look at the scoreboard, it's a 2-1 contest, like you said. In both teams, you can see them playing with such fight and such grit. It's intense out there. said the word fight. Amanda O'Leary, the head coach of the Gators, told us that that was one thing she was really pleased with from her team in that win against Louisville as Kavanaugh's shot misses off the post. You had a chance to watch Florida play Louisville. That fight that she references was their ability to get offensive second chances and defensive, defensive stops. So you saw it on the other end of the field. Now they just need that offensive production to really help out their defense. Ball bouncing every which way. The Florida Gators keep the possession here. More goggles falling off. This time they come off the head of Harris. Crazy, chilly, overcast day in Chapel Hill. The good news is that the rain has stopped. Heavy rain yesterday. Let's grab some other shot clock discussion here. Danielle Pavanelli, freshman who's starting for the second time in as many games, executes the restart for the Gators. She's number 10 in black. One of a couple of freshmen starting for Florida. Another is Maggie Hall, sister of Carolina's Gabby Hall. Harris has the ball jarred free, but with some assistance. And this will be a yellow card, I believe, on Carolina. Katie Woodruff with the yellow card. Check to the body. In women's lacrosse, you can't put your stick horizontal. She pushes, she rolls up the side of her shoulder, gets her on the neck, goggles go flying. She'll sit for two minutes. That penalty is releasable, however, if Carolina scores. So the Gators will go player advantage for two minutes. If you're new to lacrosse, the first three yellow cards are releasable. The fourth yellow card forward player must serve the entire two-minute penalty. Off the free position, Harris launches high. Possession back to the Tar Heels. Looks like Florida was in the crease. I wasn't sure if they were going to shoot. I think if I was Florida, I would pull it out. Their man up. Work the ball around. They had 45, 46 seconds on the shot clock. But I think that urgency to get on the board is what really made her take that shot. Instead, you get a situation here for the Tar Heels where you can work off a heavy majority of this player advantage time. Something that they do so well is their possession, their ability to hold the ball, you know, within the constraints of the shot clock. They've got great stick work. Not the situation you want if you're Florida defense. Go, 
Kerrigan Miller, the graduate transfer from USC with the possession. Very interesting quote from Jenny Levy about Miller. USC plays a lot of zone defense and Kerrigan plays in the man-to-man -man system on the United States national team and wanted to expand her game, had the opportunity to do that, coming to Carolina playing in a, a defensive system that's primarily man-to-man. -man. And I, I think that speaks to her as a player and her IQ, you know, wanting to elevate her game to the next level and come to Carolina, be coached by Jenny Levy, who's her coach on the U.S. team, and also really practice what it feels like to play man. More goggles falling off. Seems to be a common theme. Becky Browndorf, sophomore from Pennsylvania. Put some back on. So Florida will get possession here with a 30 seconds remaining on that man up situation. Florida with the ability here to really make something of this possession. You know, we got 10 minutes until they go into half. It's 2 1. It could even the score here. Ball loose in front. This is Egan, the Boston College transfer to get saved by Marino. Marino, she is a pro back there in the goal circle. You know, she can track. Her ability to track a ball coming down in an open lane is unbelievable. There's a reason she has so many accolades to her name. I've been so impressed with her in her career at UNC. And she remains so poised back there in the goal circle. Ten saves last week against Stony Brook. Just a steadying force there in the crease for the Tar Heels. She is, and when you speak to her, she's just so poised in the way in which she speaks about her team and about her playing in the goal circle. You know, she's just she's just a really unbelievable student athlete. Classmate Jamie Ortega misses wide, but foul on the Gators. Tar Heels, one through three on the free position situation this game. Ortega back to the eight meter. Here she goes, drives, kick save by Resnick. Ball still loose. Carolina keeps the possession. That's Julia Dorsey with the ground ball pickup. Two sport athlete who also plays soccer for Anson Dorrance's Carolina women's soccer team. Amanda O'Leary giving her some big props when we talked to her earlier in the week. She's so impressed with Dorsey's ability, you know, not just athletically, but you know, the way in which she's able to see the field, see the ball. And Dorsey's a reserve player for the Tar Heels, not even in the starting lineup, but you're right, Amanda O'Leary went on for a couple minutes about Dorsey's skills. Number four in blue. The invert, this is Wareheim, team leader in goals with four against Stony Brook. Looking in front, Miller misses wide left. Hogue working from behind, shadowed by Trombetta, the fifth year senior opting to use that extra year of eligibility granted by the NCAA. She announced late May of last year that she was coming back for another season. The player that Amanda O'Leary calls the quarterback of the Gator defense. I mean, that was a great defensive set against a really good Katie Hogue. You've seen Trombetta not just on Hogue, but on Morsberger, on Ortega. She is all over the Carolina's hottest matchups. Again, it looks like Carolina is going to head back to the eight meter here. Official holding up a three, it's three seconds on Florida. Gotta have a mark. Florida's doing such a good job, but they're losing track of their marks and that's why Carolina's getting on the eight meter so much in this first half. Kerrigan Miller drives and scores. The first goal in a Tar Heel uniform for Kerrigan Miller, the graduate transfer from USC, taking advantage on the free position. 3-1, Tar Heels. 
Dana, we talked in the open about the impact of the Florida defense in their win in the season opener against Louisville. And though Carolina's leading this game, the Gators have been really impressive in that area today. Absolutely. We've seen a lot of the Gator defense this afternoon, and I think something that Coach O'Leary spoke to was the need to get in the hands of UNC attackers, and they're doing just that. Kara Trometa, I'm so impressed with her. She's bouncing around matchups, not just to Katie Hogue, Jamie Ortega, Scotty Rose Growney, Wurzberger. She's got it all handled, and they're doing an excellent job. I know Carolina is up, but I'm impressed to see where they're starting so early in this season with their defense. And we saw in the sequence right before the timeout here, Hogue had the ball in the invert working from behind the cage, and Trombetta, you see her right there in the middle of your screen, number 16 in black. She prevented Hogue from getting around the cage and executing the Carolina offense effectively. There's a reason why she's got that QB nickname to her. She's a beast on, on defense. You know, she does it all. She's one-on-one, -on -one, she's excellent, but she can also play team defense, and you can watch her when she's playing in this defensive set. She's Her head is on a swivel, and she's always looking to make sure her teammates are gonna get that connection in the slide. Trombetta second among active Division I women's lacrosse players in career cause turnovers with 112, fourth in career ground balls with 150. Major reason why the Florida Gators have found success in recent years. And I think in this game in particular, UNC, they like to thread the needle. You know, when they get their hands free, they're unstoppable. And, you know, Florida's really limiting the options that they have offensively. Taylor Marino, three saves and goal for the Tar Heels. Florida, though, has turned it over four times. Dana, if you're Florida offensively, what do you need to adjust to try and pull back within a goal or perhaps even this one up? In terms of the Florida offense, I think, you know, they're getting that initial possession. They're getting the transition, which is arguably the hardest thing to do. They're getting in their attacking 30, and then they're not necessarily taking care of the ball. So I think in this, you know, end of this first half, they really have to be careful with their possession. You know, you can see them kind of playing tight because they're nervous because Carolina has such a solid defense. You know, and that starts with Taylor Marino back there in goal. Preseason All-American third team selection by inside lacrosse. Carolina with a 3-1 edge at the draw circle, an aspect of this game that both coaches told us would be so critical throughout the afternoon and make it 4-1 in favor of the Tar Heels. Florida's won the initial draw of the game, but the next four have all gone the way of Carolina. Here's this patient approach by the Tar Heels offensively. Wurzberger, the standout freshman, working from behind the cage. Gives it up for Grownie. She scored the first goal of this game for Carolina off a of free position. Two to three goals so far for the Tar Heels off of opportunities from the eight meter fan, and here comes another one. Again, with the three seconds from the Gators, you know, Scotty Rose Grounder, she was deed up. She was marked up. She was okay, but it's that Florida defender that wasn't quite sure if she should hedge or slide. You know, that's that's a three seconds call, and you got to go behind. You got to mark somebody when you're in the eight. That foul number, the story of the game. Grownie with her second of the contest, another free position goal. Scotty Rose Grounie, we talked about her before on the eight meter. You can't put her on the hash. She does such a good job finding the back of the net. Her vision in front of the cage is incredible. Right by Sarah Resnick's stick, off stick side, great placement. So a second consecutive two goal game for Grownie. And four points against the Seawolves. And Carolina in front by three, four to one. And I think this is what makes Carolina so lethal. Hogan and Ortega are getting a little bit stopped up by the Florida defense, but that's okay because they have players like, they have players like Scotty Rose Grounie who can just put the ball in the back of the net and no big deal, you're gonna mark Hogan Ortega, I'll take it to net. So I think that's what makes Carolina so special this year. Sarah Resnick of Florida has her seven saves, but the Tar Heels taking advantage. 13 Florida fouls. 
Dana, you talk about that offensive depth of Carolina. Jenny Levy told us that Carolina would need to establish that throughout the season because there would be so much attention paid to Hogan Ortega. Now here come the Tar Heels quickly. Emily Knowles defers to Wareheim, and Wareheim, one of those players featured in the offensive depth. She led the team in goals with four against Stony Brook. And I think that speaks to the selflessness of Hogan Ortega. You know, they are the leading scorers in points for Carolina, but they don't have a problem dishing it to their teammates and making them look good. And that's what makes Carolina, you know, so special, like we mentioned before, their ability to share the ball. It really is a team effort on attack. Another great save there from Resnick. Yes, there have been the three goals off of free positions for the Tar Heels, but Resnick and the flow of play really, really impressive in this first half. Resnick, MVP of this first half for the Gators. She's done an excellent job. She's getting a lot of shots fired her way by Carolina, and she's doing an excellent job kind of holding her own back there in the cage. So Florida in search of their second goal of the contest. Grace Haas scored the first. This is Brianna Harris, strong to cage. This is wide left, and that's a quick shot by Florida. Carolina has been so patient offensively. Florida trying the quicker approach, but when it goes wrong like that, you're giving the ball right back to the Tar Heels. And that's a tough angle by Harris. You know, that ball started with the goalkeeper transition from Marino. You know, you can't take off angle shots against a team like Carolina. They've got a quick transition, just like you see right here. They got the ball down quickly in their offensive end, and now they're settling, taking a breath. Once again, the Florida defense has to play really tough. Carolina is such a lethal offensive attack. Some folks may see the scoreline from that Stony Brook game and see only 14 goals, but Jenny Levy told us that since it was just so cold, it was really tough to get the offense going because Stony Brook was playing a zone. Against a zone, you have to pass so much, but that's tough to do when your hands are so cold. Yeah, that game had some nasty weather. It was cold, it was rainy, but you know, Carolina came out on top and really showed why they are the number one team. Those great teams overcome adversity that's applied by more than just the opponent. Low shot clock situation here for the Tar Heels, under 20. Miller has a free position goal already in this game. Rolls and is denied by Resnick. That is a great save by Resnick. Kierke Miller, great shot by Kierke Miller also. She shot offside stick, kept it in her right hand, but a little switch shot. Great job tracking the ball by Resnick. Now we'll see if the Gators are perhaps a little bit more patient offensively as they try and add to this 4-1 score. Obviously, those elements Sunday played a factor, really cold game. Do you have any memories of any really cold ones you played in, whether it was in college or perhaps in your prep career in your native New Hampshire? More than I can count on both hands. <laughs> whether it was preseason or a game, they say lacrosse is a spring sport, but I'm really not convinced. Well, the calendar still says winter. Haas has the only goal so far for Florida, and she'll go to the eight meter after a Carolina hold. Carolina, you saw three girls on Haas. They just do such a good job with their slide package. They send that second and third slide so early that it's almost impossible for you to see the goal. Kayla Wood called for the infraction. Haas drives and scores again, her second of the game. Great way to answer for Florida. They needed that goal so badly. Two goals on the board. Great job by Haas, really getting that quick first step. Marino had a hard time tracking it. It's hard when you're going one-on-one -on -one with the goalie there. So back-to-back -back two goal games for Grace Haas, the senior to open up this campaign for the Florida Gators. And that's a goal that Florida really needed to have because as well as they've been playing defensively, some of the sloppiness putting Carolina on the eight meter Allowing the Tar Heels to take that three goal lead. It's the opportunity now for Florida to put a little bit more momentum back on their side before halftime. That second goal really gives the Florida defense an opportunity to breathe a little bit, regroup, reconnect. The 
because in theory, you may have only two or three more possessions remaining between the two teams combined in this first half. You hope that goal by Florida, if you're Coach O'Leary, is that momentum that you need taking you into that second half. Another draw won by the Tar Heels, though Trenchard loses her footing and gives it away. So back-to-back -back possessions here for Florida. Another golden opportunity. Great job by Florida capitalizing on that loose ball, on that 50-50 ball. You don't usually see Trenchard lose the ball. She did slip, but Florida capitalized, gets the ball in their attack, really trying to make something here of this possession. Shannon Cavanaugh, a goal in 28 straight games. Scoreless so far, and there is another Florida goal. Ashley Gonzalez, the freshman, the first of her career. I mean, if you're a freshman taking it on the crease against a great goalie like Taylor Marino, you got to feel good about that. She does an excellent job with her vision, noticing that she's open and really does exactly what she needed to do is put the ball in the back of the net. Gonzalez out of Dix Hills, New York, started the opener for the Gators at Louisville, coming off the bench today. That's one that she'll remember forever. Number one in the collegiate career. That's huge if you're a freshman, especially playing a team like North Carolina. Something that Coach O'Leary also spoke with us earlier in the week. You know, her freshman really stepping up, and she's been very impressed, you know, with their level of play here so early on in the season. Well, obviously, it's a very strange season across college lacrosse because of the ongoing pandemic. But Coach O'Leary said it was very important for her team to be able to have full fall practices, which they did even though Florida is a member of the American Athletic Conference for women's lacrosse for the health and safety protocols, they follow the SEC in which the majority of Gator sports compete in and they cleared Florida to practice in the fall. And Coach O'Leary definitely saying that was critical. Rare turnover by Carolina. Ortega and Hogue can't connect. Haas with the ground ball. Florida with a little momentum here with that second, second and third goal. But for those freshmen coming in, that fall is invaluable, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, it's an opportunity to really bond with your upperclassmen and really find that chemistry and that cohesiveness that you need, especially when you're playing a game like this. You know, one in seven matchup, that's no joke. And so, you know, having the opportunity to bring your freshmen along and, you know, get some touches, you know, understand what it feels like to practice in college is, is, is really invaluable. Coach O'Leary told us that She's really looking forward to getting the Gators out on the road because it gives the players the opportunity to bond off the field, which is something that just hasn't been there due to the ongoing pandemic. Egan, the transfer, has it knocked away. Oh, that's good defense. Emily Knowles, sophomore from Glenwood, Maryland, but it is a foul. Restart on the 12 meter arc here for Egan and the Gators. Shot clock dwindling, they'll have to make something. Low shot by Cavanaugh. Good stuff by Marino, but Florida keeps possession. Closing out on a minute to go in the first half. And we've got a reset of that shot clock. So again, an opportunity for Florida to take a breath, work the ball around, get into some sort of set. I like that Florida's now playing so wide off the 12 meter. It gives them the ability to kind of find the lane, find the holes in which they can penetrate Carolina's defense. And you say patience here, Dana. Florida does not have to let the Tar Heels touch the ball again if they don't want to. But Carolina will get a chance because of the quick shot by Kavanaugh and a good save by Marino. I think that's something Carolina does so well is make you seem like you're open and the need to take that shot. And Marino, great stop. She'll get that quick transition and they'll get it in their attack to end the first half. Big save by Marino today. Oh, the pretty quiet first half. Wareheim misses, covered up by Resnick. And the Gators now with some time here, if they hustle. My guess is they'll take very good care of that ball <laughs> until the final whistle. No need to force anything for the Gators. They'll keep the momentum from back-to-back -back goals. 
The Tar Heels led it 4-1. Two late goals by the Florida Gators. Make it a one-goal game at the half. Carolina 4 and Florida 3, a top-10 matchup living up to the billing here in Chapel Hill. Three, number one, North Carolina, leading number seven, Florida at the half at Dorrance Field in Chapel Hill. Two teams that are loaded with talent in this 2021 season. A really exciting year around the world of women's college lacrosse. But don't take my word for it. Let's ask Tari and Amari about their players to watch. What an entertaining first half of college lacrosse from Dorrance Field in Chapel Hill, number one, North Carolina leading the seventh-ranked Florida Gators 4-3, to three, despite the fact that it's been a quiet half and a quiet game for Katie Hogue and Jamie Ortega. It's a duo that has rewritten the North Carolina record books, yet just one point between the two of them so far today. I think that really speaks to the Gator defense, but Hogue and Ortega, I mean, they've got impressive numbers. They are good players, and they're really doing a lot of work off the ball to set their teammates up for success. You see the fifth name on that list, Marie McCool, all three of the players on that list, Hogue, Ortega, and McCool, are on the field today. Hogue and Ortega as players. McCool is in her first season as a volunteer assistant coach for the Tar Heels. Marie McCool was such an impressive player at UNC. I had the opportunity to play against her. Awesome on the draw, and I think she's really added to that expertise area for Carolina. And Jenny Levy was very quick to point that out to us. She said that McCool has had such an impact in instructing these Carolina players on how to properly take the draw and how to make the Tar Heels more effective in that area. And I think it shows in the first half of this game, draw controls 5-3 in favor of Carolina. She definitely adds a wealth of knowledge for this Carolina team. But I also think, too, having a former player on the sidelines on your staff really helps in terms of leadership and really kind of garnering some of these younger players and bringing them up in the ranks. And not just a former player, but someone that played recently. Yes, and was exceptional. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. Jamie Ortega, 186 career goals, 248 career points. That was coming into today. It's now 249 after her assist. So ready to go with the draw to begin the second half. Carolina led it 4-1. The last two goals of the first half went to the Florida Gators. And that really swung the momentum into halftime. Opening draw of the second half, controlled by Florida in the black. North Carolina is in the blue. With the former Virginia Cavalier, Dana Boyle, I'm Matt Krause. Glad you're with us. Gators turn it right over. Ground ball pickup for Scotty Rose Growney, and the Tar Heels go back on offense. Those unforced errors, I was just about to say, the draw control, that's exactly what Amanda O'Leary likely talked about in halftime. They did the hard work, they got the draw, and then they turned it over. Carolina now on attack as we start the second half. And here is Ortega down the baseline and again turned aside by Resnick, but we're going to get a penalty here. What'd you see here, Dana? Good hard defense by Florida, but I think, you know, that's a slash. You got to control your ability to check. Ortega will get on the line on the eight meter. Again, you can't put Carolina on the line, especially line to end line, and that's a perfect example of that. Just another element of the game of those talented attackers for the Tar Heels, that riding game. Shannon Cavanaugh, 28 consecutive games with a goal, is yet to score here. Number 17 in black. A very patient approach here. Kavanaugh, again, one of those players very similar to Hogan Ortega. Hasn't scored yet. She is a scorer for the Gators, but, you know, just doing all the little things really well and setting up her other teammates to put points on the board. I think that's what's going to make Gators really lethal as they go into their season and even in the postseason. And the reason why Florida's being very deliberate is because they're trying to kill off the time and the player advantage here after the yellow card. Ball loose inside and picked up by Carolina and Caroline Wakefield. Knoll slips though, this will be a chance for Florida. Kavanaugh with the ground ball. Kavanaugh's decision, they had numbers. They did have numbers, you know, 
the defense for Carolina had a little bit trouble getting back in transition. They thought the ball was going the opposite direction, but that's a really good heads up play by Kavanaugh, the senior, to recognize the need, the pace of play, when to slow it down. A very veteran laden Florida team. Haas, a senior, she has two of the three for the Gators. Gives it away to Kavanaugh. Look at this Carolina defense harassing Harris. Carolina sends the double quick to Harris. Haas looking for the hat trick. Has the ball knocked free. Another cause turnover potentially. Ball still loose. Knoll's unable to scoop the ground ball. Now does so. And it'll be a foul against Kavanaugh. Emily Knowles doesn't get enough credit, I feel like, back there on defense. She's just a sophomore. Great 1v1 defense. That is how this transition started, her ability to lock up the Florida attacker, get that 50-50 ball. You see fouls and turnovers. There's numbers coming up there. 26 combined fouls and turnovers for the Gators. Self-inflicted wounds for Florida. And Ortega has that goal disallowed. She will go to the eight meter. Ortega does all of the things right. Nice little quick spin moves, brings it on over to her right. Tough angle. She gets the ball in the back of the net. She's not pleased that the referee blew the whistle. So it's a foul on Haas that puts Ortega back on the eight meter. Fourth time in the last couple minutes she's been there. Drives hard to goal this time and is able to score. Great answer by Ortega. Three for seven from the three positioning shot, you know. In her left hand, it's got defenders on either side of her. She's just an excellent player. This, this is why she is as good as she is. Does an excellent job just putting the ball in the back of the net. Exactly what Carolina needed in the second half. Fourth goal of the season is number 187 in Carolina Blue. She had 81 of them in the last full season she played in I 2019. I can't even fathom that, but it's so impressive. Do you remember your goal numbers if I asked you a season? Oh, gosh. I don't have them in front of me. I so. don't have them in front of me. No, okay. I do not. It wasn't Jamie Ortega style. It wasn't. I can tell one. you that. It okay. was not. It was not. She might be the best to ever do it. 11 saves for Sarah Resnick in cage for Florida. Florida starting to gain some ground on the draw. It's now 5-4 in favor of Carolina. Kavanaugh against Mastriani as it has been all game long. We talked about the impact of Marie McCool on the draw. Shannon Kavanaugh is one of the best to do it in the game these days. You see the success that Mastriani and the Tar Heels are able to have at the critical draw circle. Mastriani and Kavanaugh Excellent, excellent draw specialist. But what I love most about the draw in this game are outside of the circle, the 50-50 balls that are happening. That's where you really see a team excel, is when your players on the circle are able to get the ball when it goes down on the ground. And that's a rule change in recent years that limits the number of players between the restraining lines on a draw. Only three permitted. That rule change enacted a couple of years ago. Possession to Carolina. This is Emma Trenchard. Ortega scored a moment ago. Working her way around the crease. Has to pass it. Brooklyn Newman. Newman strong and low, but a kick save by Resnick. That's number 12. A good save by Resnick. She's, she might be a little hurt after that shot. That one had some juice on it. Here's the ride from Hogue. <laughs> Carolina definitely not making it easy for Florida in transition. Something that Carolina does so well is that ride. You see their attackers ride the defense all the way to the 30, as far as they can go. They don't give up until that ball is safely over. 
the 30. How difficult is that skill to master if you're an attacker? It's very hard. It's, it's, it's challenging because it takes so much more work than you actually think. You know, you've got to ride from the end of the goal line all the way to the 30. You're never alone if you're playing Carolina, and that's a perfect example. Kavanaugh has trenchered on her. Oh, Marino <laughs> puts nice out the stick. Up. Yeah. Her vision back there, I don't know how she sees what she sees with seven attackers and defenders running all in front of her, but that's an excellent, excellent play. That was a shot that was probably going wide, but she's able to terminate the Florida possession anyway by sticking that stick out. I think Florida was trying to find her teammate on the crease, but Marino's all over that. Stops it before it can even happen. Seventh save of the game for the senior from New York. Speaking of seniors from New York, Ortega defers to Hogue. Hogue and Wurzberger. Past, present, and future of Carolina women's lacrosse right there. And the Tar Heels score again. Taylor Wareheim, fifth of the season. Team leader in goals in the opener against Stony Brook notches her first today. Wareheim a little quiet in that first half. I was wondering when she might wake up. Great job. You can see her fired up, her teammates fired up. That's exactly what Carolina needed in the second half. And a really good feed from Wurzberger, just a freshman. Great feed from Wurzberger. Her vision behind X is really, really impressive, especially as a freshman. You know, she's getting bodied up a lot by the Gator defense, and, you know, she just has the ability to see around her defenders and really thread the needle. You don't usually put freshmen behind the cage, but in her case, I think it's okay. <laughs> Saw both Wurzberger and Hogue back there, and we were talking to Jenny Levy before the game. She talked about managing expectations and continuing to grow with a team that had all this veteran talent, was ranked number one. And she brought up the example of Hogue coming in as a midfielder, having not played behind X and learning that skill and mastering that skill as a way in which some of these individual players can continue that growth process. I would agree. I think it speaks to the versatility of the Carolina offense, but it also speaks to Jenny Levy's ability to develop her players. I think when you think about Hogue, you know, as a midi now playing at X, that's not usually something that you see in Hogue's ability to just pick up on that. And now they have Wurzberger who can cover for Hogue, you know, when she's getting guarded. Perfect example to this afternoon. That assist for Wurzberger, her first point in a Carolina uniform. Have a really good feeling it will not be the last. thousand of them in high school. A thousand. That is so impressive. Draw control to Florida. Fifth draw win for the Gators to Carolina's six. Florida went down by three goals at four to one. They answered back with two straight late in the first half. Does Florida have a repeat in them or is this Another situation like Sunday with the Carolina defense locked down. By this point in the game, Stony Brook had finished scoring. I think Florida knew what they were getting themselves into coming and playing a Carolina team. You know, you've got to play a complete half. I expect them to fight till the very last whistle. Grace Haas wanted the hat trick. She has two goals already for the Gators. Her shot missing wide to the right, but Florida does keep possession. It's Haas. Checked by Knowles and the man-to-man -man defense loses her footing. Play on, say the officials. Here comes Carolina in transition. Knowles with a major head of steam over center. Let's see if they fast break here. I think they're gonna, they've got numbers. Knowles bounces it wide to the right. Resnick coming in clutch with the save. She may be my MVP for the second half, again. She has 12 saves on the contest. And that comes after her game against Louisville in which she had 11. That's 23 saves in roughly a game and a half for a player that's only a redshirt freshman, but her third year on campus in Gainesville. Amanda O'Leary says, yeah, she's a redshirt freshman, but she plays like a redshirt senior. Absolutely, playing in seven games last year. That is the experience that she has. Then they play Louisville and now they're playing Carolina. Talk about ripping the Band-Aid off, she's ready. Wurzberger was looking for Growney ever so slightly the timing off, and it's a ground ball for Caitlin Dabkowski, preseason all-conference 
defender for the Florida Gators, 33 in black. Ashley Gonzalez wearing number 21. She has the third goal for Florida, the freshman. First career goal for her. And Florida will call for time here. So we've praised Sarah Resnick in goal for Florida, but that's not to take anything away from what Taylor Marino has done in cage for the Tar Heels today. Taylor Marino, always impressive to watch. She had 10 saves versus Stony Brook, only allowing seven goals against. Excellent, excellent leader back there in the crease for Carolina. Just does everything so well. Her vision, her saves, her ability to transition. She's an excellent, excellent asset for this team way more than just a lacrosse player. She's an artist, too. She is. She designed, if I'm correct, the mural when the team walks out. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty impressive. Also designed some of the t-shirts that the Tar Heels were wearing during warm-ups. So seven saves and talent beyond the lacrosse field. So now a 6-3 game in favor of the Tar Heels, their second three-goal lead of the contest. Let's go inside the huddles here. First, if you're Amanda O'Leary in Florida, Dana, what are you telling your team? I think for Florida, they're doing such a good job playing defense. They've got excellent defenders who have great sticks that can bring the ball up in transition. So let's take care of the ball on our attacking front and really work to get the best shot, not necessarily the first shot. This is how the ACC was looking when the sports world froze on March 12th. North Carolina and Notre Dame they were 7-0 overall, 2-0 in conference. Dana, we had gotten the emails. We were ready to talk to the coaches. We were ready to call the game. And then it was ripped away Ooh. from us. We were ready, and then it ended. I mean, you look at the ACC standings in 2020, and you look at them in 2021. I mean, it's tough. Like, you go and play these teams, and it's like a postseason game when you're playing any sort of ACC team. So it's impressive, to say the least. And even though we are back to playing, the impacts of the ongoing pandemic still being felt, Notre Dame unable to play this weekend due to COVID protocols involving the Irish program. They were supposed to host Central Michigan tonight. I credit the team, not just in the ACC, but everywhere, really their ability to just adapt. And, you know, games are getting changed, games are getting moved up, and you just roll with the punches. I think everybody is just so thankful for the opportunity to put on a jersey and play someone other than themselves. That was a common theme that we heard from both coaches leading into this game. But we talk all about this Carolina win over Stony Brook on Sunday. That was not on the original schedule. The plan for North Carolina was to play their annual matchup with James Madison to open up the season, as the Tar Heels have done for many recent years, open the year against the Dukes, 2018 national champions. But JMU with COVID protocols in their program, so the Tar Heels had to adapt and pick up a new game on the fly. Maggie Hall, two goals in her debut for Florida. Shot goes wide left. And possession to the Tar Heels. Knowles won the foot race to the end line. And this is a slow, clear situation. Something Jenny Levy said that if she had to pick an area to improve upon from last week, that was a major focus, the slow, clear. They do a good job in that transition, in that slow clear, really switching the fields. That's key. You know, you got to make the Gator defense shift their vision and shift their players on the field so you can kind of find that opening. Another Florida foul. This will be their 22nd. Our officiating crew has been busy today. Restart from the 12 meter. Mastriani. Nicole Humphrey, number nine in blue, name we haven't called very much. The Tar Heels. But back out there for Carolina. Tar Heels only used seven players off the bench against Stony Brook. They did not go very deep. 
Carolina was in the crease there. Wareheim got in there. on the flip side doing a good job of switching the fields. That's how you also beat the Carolina ride, is the ball moves faster than the players, so really those long passes, switching the fields, really help you get down the field just much easier. And that sequence right there, perhaps a perfect example. A slow clear for the Gators, well executed. Florida's first offensive possession out of the timeout. Ended in a turnover on a missed shot. Now it's Cavanaugh, still without a goal today. Tracing the crease, Ooh. has it knocked free. Loose toward the sideline, who's gonna get it? It's Carolina, another turnover forced by the Tar Heels. I thought was a good one to go behind the back, but you're playing against Emma Trenchard. She's a good defender, arguably, if not one of the best to ever do it in the Carolina jersey. All-American anchor of the Tar Heel defense. So the Tar Heels back on offense with an opportunity to take a four-goal lead. It would be the first of the game. Carolina led it by three at four to one. Now up by three again at six three. Wurzberger, the freshman, her first career point coming on an assist on the Tar Heels' last goal. Hogue behind X. Speaking of great defense, Kara Trombetta, but she's called for the foul. Trombetta back on the Hogue matchup. Hogue's not used to seeing so much pressure behind. She handles it well. I just think Trombetta got in her hands and got her sticks tied up. You can't have your horizontal stick and you can't push it towards the body. So it's foul 23 for the Gators. Hogue looking to distribute over Trombetta. Weirheim whistles it long. Ortega keeps it for Carolina though. It's a great, great pass feed inside. Her ability to thread the needle, we've talked about it before, is exceptional. One of the best feeders. And you can see her moving out of X because she is getting that pressure. She's moving to the elbow to feed instead. Ortega gets close to the crease, but draws the foul. I thought that was close to a crease violation. I did too. I think the referee signaled a push right before she fell into the crease. Oh yeah, there, there it goes. Yep. Horizontal stick. So it puts Ortega back on the eight meter. She'll pass out of it to Growney. Florida may have gotten away with another foul right there. You can hear the fans yelling at the officials. Limited fan attendance to guests of the student athletes, but they are passionate. Those lacrosse parents making noise. Scotty Rose Growney already has a free position goal today. 59 seconds on the shot clock. We'll see if she does what Ortega. No, she's going to take it. Drives and scores. Scotty Rose Growney with a hat trick. The Tar Heels have their largest lead of the game. 7-3, Carolina. North Carolina, the Tar Heels on top of the Florida Gators, 7-3. A top 10 matchup here in Chapel Hill. It's far from the only matchup involving ranked ACC teams this weekend. We've got quite the slate if you look at it. We've got Loyola is going to play this weekend. We've got Carolina back on Sunday playing High Point. Virginia and Richmond later this afternoon. Cavaliers going on the road to the Spiders web. And it'll be Syracuse and Loyola tomorrow at noon. Top five matchup. Loyola represented on the Florida roster in the coaching department. Taryn Van Thoff, fifth year assistant coach under Amanda O'Leary is a Loyola alum. You played against her, Dan. Taryn Van Thoff was very good for the Greyhounds. I've been so impressed with her career, you know, post-college lacrosse. You know, she's done an excellent job with the Florida Gators. I think when you've got young players, current former players on your team, like Tara Van Thoff, who had an excellent college career, it really helps bring up some of those younger players, kind of like we were talking about with Mary McCool. And last season, Loyola dismantled Florida. They did. 17-6. That was the week after Florida had beaten Maryland in College Park. Florida was on a roll there in the beginning of the season, right before everything got shut down. 
You know, they beat Stony Brook, they beat Maryland. Four ranked wins before the season ended. But that's, that's typical Florida non-conference scheduling. Yes, the American has some emerging programs in it, but Florida head and shoulders, at least in my opinion, above the rest of the teams in that conference. They've got to schedule tough in the non-con. I would agree. I think playing out of conference for Florida has helped elevate their game since their inception in 2010. They've really made a name for themselves in the women's lacrosse landscape. Nine conference championships across three different conferences for the Gators in a Final Four berth in 2012. Kerrigan Miller, USC transfer, can't connect with Wareheim and the rare sloppy turnover for North Carolina today. Kerrigan Miller, I think she was surprised at how open she was and that was supposed to be a shot and then it turned into a pass. It is only the second game for Carolina. We'll give, we'll give her a break. So Florida back on offense. And this is a spot where the second half approaching its midpoint, Dana, Florida down by four for the first time today. You feel that this is a really important possession if you're the Gators. Absolutely, this is a momentum goal if they're able to get it past Taylor Marino. They've got to get on the board. They haven't scored since the first half, so this is, this is big for them. Cavanaugh still goalless today. That 28 game goal streak in some jeopardy. Harris working on Knowles. Again, great man to man. Egan has it knocked away. Oh, but a foul on Carolina. This will put Florida on the eight meter. Florida just one for two in free position shots today. Florida, good job. They have those second attacks. You know, she tries to get it through. It's a check above the, the shoulders. You can't do that. It'll put Florida on the eight meter, hopefully giving them an opportunity to put the ball in the back of the net. Good decision. That's a great decision by Florida. With time in the shot clock, still 30 seconds to work with. We'll have another foul coming here. That'll be three seconds. And that was Florida's defensive bugaboo in the first half. Grace Haas has two of the three goals for the Gators. Let's see if she drives here. The answer is yes, but Marino denies her the hat trick. No hat trick today for Grace Haas. Marino coming up big with that save. That's the momentum that the Gators needed. Not going to happen in that possession. Eighth save for Marino as the second half is halfway over. Tar Heels have scored all three goals between the two teams in this second half. Slowly building to the lead. And will defeat Florida in a regular season home game for the first time in the last three meetings in Chapel Hill between these two. Yes, Carolina won it in the NCAA tournament in 2019, 15-11. But the last two regular season matchups both going the way of the Gators. Hogue. Finds Wurzberger, barely kept alive, but then Resnick covers it up. Strong play in the crease by Resnick all game long. All game long. That's a great feed, too, by Katie Hogue. She finds Wurzberg. She's getting out of the X position, which I think is really good for her to have that opportunity to feel what it feels like to not play behind X. In transition, Haas. There's the hat trick. Haas getting it done. Didn't get it done on the eight meter, but that's okay. The next pen possession down, she puts it in the back of the net. That really all started on the defense. Great execution in the transition. That leads to numbers up for the Gators. They'll get on the board with four. And that's the kind of goal the Gators really needed for the momentum, taking advantage, like you said, of the transition opportunity. When you're able to get a stop on your defense and it transitions well into a goal, you got to be fired up about that. And it really started with Resnick. She did a great job, you know, stopping that connection between Hogan and Borsberger, and now Gators on the board. So 7-4 game now. Back to a three-goal advantage for the Tar Heels. Already the fifth goal of the season for Grace Haas. One of those six Gators honored by the American Athletic Conference in the preseason awards, an all-conference selection. Another one, Shannon Cavanaugh. 
That'll be the battle against Ali Mastriani for the draw once again. And another possession for Florida. Draw win for the Gators. Let's see if they go quickly here. Zala is the freshman, the only player not in Grace Haas to score for Florida. Florida doing a good job with balancing that pace. We thought they might take it in transition, but that's what Carolina does so well. They make you think that you can fast break on them, but they have numbers. So I think this is great for Florida, really finding out how their team plays. Harris sends it wide. Possession to the Tar Heels. It's a hard 1v1 by Harris. You can't be disappointed if you're the Florida coach in that. Kayla Wood in transition. Carolina going quickly like they do so well. But then Wood opts to dump it off. Kayla Wood, someone we haven't really mentioned. She's a great defender, and she's been contributing on defense since her freshman year. I think her experience and leadership on D is really key off the bench for UNC. A senior from Catonsville, Maryland. This Tar Heel team just so deep. Growney has another one. A four-goal game for Scotty Rose Growney. Scotty Rose Growney does it again. Slips just past Resnick. I think she was surprised it went in the back of the net, but she does a little nice little shake move. She's got such a hard shot, and she adjusts her hips and her feet to go straight down to goal. She had a real coming out party against the Gators in the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago. As there has been for several years, all sorts of hype around Hogan Ortega and attention paid to them into that game, but it was Growney but a Sports Center top 10 behind the back goal against the Gators in that game helped lead Carolina to the 15 11 win the last time the NCAA tournament was contested in 2019. It's been really fun to watch Scotty Rose Brownie flourish in her time here at UNC. She does so many things well. Yes, it's her fourth goal today, but what she does off ball I think is just equally as impressive. So almost as quickly as Florida trimmed it down to three, North Carolina pushes it back to a four goal advantage. Jamie Levy's Tar Heels, 12 and a half minutes away from a two and zero start. And a draw win for Mastriani and the Tar Heels. And you would imagine now with a four goal lead, and time getting late in this game, Carolina's going to be pretty deliberate offensively. Absolutely, and they have to be because Florida's defense is playing so well. It's the respect, the equal respect that is amongst both teams that makes this such a good matchup. You almost feel like you're in the postseason. I feel like I'm in the postseason because these two teams are so, so talented, and they're playing so hard with so much grit and physicality. What did we say right off the top? Potential Final Four preview? We called it. Wurzberger behind X. Carolina working the two-man game with Scotty Rose Browning back there and Wurzberger. Trying to catch a defender. He'll kick it back up top. See if they can't find something from the 12. Mastriani already has a goal. Make it two. She's been strong in the draw circle all day. Now two goals to go with it for Ali Mastriani. Two goals against the game in Stony Brook. Two goals today. I love her versatility, and I love the way in which the Carolina offense shares the ball. They kicked it up top. They couldn't work the game behind X, so they kicked it up top. She gets the goal. It's exactly what you need from her. How did that two-man game behind the X lead to the opportunity there? I think the defenders are all focused on X. They're all focused on the two players behind the goal and then the elbow girls. They're not necessarily focusing on the girl above the goal. So I think when you shift the ball and you move the ball, it forces the defender's heads to get on a swivel and you can find an open lane like that. So Amanda O'Leary's Gators now find themselves down by five for the first time today. 
Ball is won by Kavanaugh in Florida. Twenty-eight straight games with a goal for Shannon Kavanaugh. Has yet to find the back of the net today. And that's kind of the game within the game, Dana. A real testament to Carolina's defense. I think when you can limit such an excellent player like Kavanaugh as a Carolina defense, you know, that's almost a win more than the goal on the board right now. And it is Kavanaugh trying to give it up for Gonzalez. Missed connection, and Carolina will take possession. The Gators called for a hold there inside the eight meter. Now the transition game, Wood lobbing it ahead for Hillman. Carolina in front by five, and we've said this game feels like a postseason game just because of the talent on this field, the skill, and the intensity of this game. Jenny Levy told us as Ortega tries to give it up, Trombetta fighting for the ground ball and will get it for Florida. And Jenny Levy's line was, yeah, sometimes it helps to play those games against a mid-major team that you're going to win heavily against, but her players love these competitive games, even in non-conference action. These are fun. These are fun. It's fun to play a team that's competitive. It's fun just to be competitive when you're as good as Carolina and as good as the Gators. You know, you want to play good teams. That's how you get better, and that's how you prepare yourself for the depth of your season, whether it's in conference play or postseason. And this year, 10 ACC games, a schedule adjustment due to the COVID pandemic. Playing Duke. Virginia Tech and Virginia twice. Florida familiar with the double opponent situation. The American playing two game series in conference play this year. Wakefield called for the foul. She puts her stick horizontal. I thought she got stick on stick, but the referees saw something different. So Florida will have possession. Cassidy Bresnahan with the restart. Marino, as she has done all day, just kind of sticks the stick up right there to grab it. And she makes it look easy. She barely moved her feet on that save. It's almost as if she expected it. Another squandered opportunity for the Gators. Ortega, and just as strong as Marino has been, Sarah Resnick has perhaps been stronger. The battle of the goalies this afternoon. Resnick equally as impressive. So Trombetta will bring it front side for Florida. Not a lot of time to work with for the Gators here. Down by five inside, nine minutes to play. Trombetta, good job bringing it all the way to the attacking end. You've seen that on both sides of the field. Trencher does it, Trombetta does it. It's awesome when you have defenders that have stick skills like that you can rely on to, care, to carefully bring the ball into your attacking 30. As long as you can dot the I's and cross the T's and avoid an offside call, it's a really beneficial portion of running the transition game. Kavanaugh bounces it wide left, stays scoreless today. Bresnahan will pick it up. Gators keep possession. Good take by Kavanaugh. She saw that she had an open lane, just couldn't connect quite with the back of the net. Eight minutes to play in the game. 9-4, Carolina by five. Three position opportunity forthcoming for Grace Haas. Great decision by Great Haas. She kind of pumps her stick a little bit, looking for that shooting space. She'll get on the eight meter. This is a good hash if you're a right hand. Haas already with three goals today. Drives. Denied a chance at a fourth though. Bresnahan scoops the ground ball for the Gators. They'll keep possession, 7.37 to go. 9-4, Carolina. That second and third possession exactly what Amanda O'Leary wanted from this Gators attack, and they'll get a second opportunity here. But like we said, time running low, down by five. Seven and a half to play. 
Haas looking in front. There's the goal for Shannon Cavanaugh. 29 straight games with a goal. It took until the waning minutes, but the Gators are within four. 9-5. Cavanaugh scores it for Florida. Turnovers, ground balls, really setting her teammates up for success. Team best four goals today for North Carolina. Senior from Berwyn, Pennsylvania. Tar Heels have seen five different goal scorers among their nine goals. It's a 9-5 lead for North Carolina with 7.14 to go. Shannon Cavanaugh, see her there in the middle of your screen, number 17 in black. Took her until the final 10 minutes of this game, but she scores for a 29th consecutive contest. But the fact that it took her so long to score, and yet Florida was in the game, Dana, that speaks to the depth of these Gators. Absolutely. Her first goal coming just in the second half. So late, too, I think, you know, you got to credit Florida's attack. You know, they're able to get points on the board against a really good North Carolina team. They have depth in their attack, too, which will really help them in the postseason as they continue throughout. 9-5, four goal lead for North Carolina, 7-14 to go. Cavanaugh and Mastriani to take the draw. Not over yet, but just not a lot of time if you're the Gators. Not a lot of time to make any sort of mistake. They really have to get the possession. And they do so here, it's Harris. Speaking to that trench, he brings it quickly into the offensive zone. Seven minutes left. Florida down by four, nine to five. You can see Florida, you know, judging the pace of the game, waiting until all of their middies and attackers get into the attack to really start something. Danielle Pavanelli, one of the two freshmen to start for Florida, along with Maggie Hall. Gonzalez, another freshman off the bench, scoring today for the Gators. Coach O'Leary talking about how impressed she is with the freshman's ability to kind of insert themselves into the game, pace of play. I, you can't tell who's a freshman out here. Haas, the veteran with three goals today, wanting a fourth. Sends it wide again, a lot of wide shots by the Gators. And I think that speaks to Carolina's defense. They're doing a good job of forcing the attack off the elbows to take those really wide angle shots. So either Marino can save it or it goes wide. Cavanaugh keeps possession alive. A four goal lead for North Carolina. And they have four more free position goals than Florida. Here's your stat of the day, Dana. 26 fouls committed by the Gators, just 24 shots. More fouls than shots. Fouls are hard. They've really put Carolina on the eight meter, and it's really inhibited their ability to kind of get that possession that they need to help their defense take a breath. You have to imagine that'll be near the top of the to-do list to get fixed for Amanda O'Leary. Gators had their next game against Kennesaw State already postponed due to COVID protocols in the Kennesaw State program. That was scheduled for Tuesday, so their next action at Loyola a week from Sunday, February the 28th. Pavanelli, under 30 to shoot. Wakefield called for the foul. Good call by the official. I think Carolina playing aggressive, aggressive defense. That is unfortunate if you are Gators. That's tough. They had the possession. It's a false start. More of those unforced errors. Hillman into the attacking zone for the Tar Heels who can Trim this one down underneath three minutes to go if they work the whole shot clock. Right at three minutes. Carolina really taking their time with this attack. There's no need to rush it. They're up by four.
You can see the Florida defense adjusting. They're not coming out as high on the Carolina like they were in the first half, trying to really get that possession. They're kind of waiting for them to come into the eight meter before they put a body on them. Katie Hogue has the ball knocked free. Aggressive defense by Kavanaugh. She's been more of a matchup with Hogue in the second half than she has in the first half. Wurzberger, the first of her career. Wurzberger, great shot. She wanted that. That was a hard, hard shot past Resnick. She does a good job kind of rocking her defender off of her line. Puts her hips down to goal, stick down to goal, ball in the back of the net. You can see her fired up. She's been looking for that first goal today. Took until her fourth shot of the afternoon. She has, and you know, that first goal against a really good team like Florida is going to help her confidence as they move into more of their season. We know she can get it done based on her stats from high school, but you almost have to believe you can do it in college. It's different. The number one ranked recruit in the class. Over 1,000 points in high school and a Florida native getting the job done against her home state team. So 10-5 game now. Took until 319 in the second half for either team to reach double digits. Are you surprised by that, Dana? Yes and no. I think going into this game, we knew that both teams had strong defenses. They kept their last opponent to under eight goals. That is really impressive. That speaks to how good your defense is. And there's been a lot of unforced turnovers on both sides of the ball, and I think that too, you know, limits the amount of possession and goals that you can actually have. There's now three minutes to play, and Florida in a five goal disadvantage. Harris held goalless, loose ball inside the eight meter, picked up by Wakefield. A turnover for Florida, their 12th giveaway. Carolina really maximizing on the 50-50 balls here. Oh, it looks like Katie Wood, Kayla Wood wanted the ball in the eight. I like it. Defenders wanted to play some offense. We saw Knowles had a look earlier in the game for Carolina. The defenders for Carolina have such good stick work, I wouldn't be surprised. Ortega. Under two minutes to go now. Florida defense putting on the pressure as we're under two minutes. The need to get the ball is huge here. Carolina doing a good job of playing keep away. Growney with her four goals today. Under 30 to shoot now. Florida leaving Ortega a little bit on an island. I'm surprised they're not sending that second slide. Wilhelm with her second of the afternoon. Sixth of the season. I suppose that's why, because they knew Wareheim was streaking by the crease. Great job putting the ball in the back of the net. Makes it look so effortless. A textbook late game possession by the Tar Heels. They used a lot of clock and ended it with a goal. And I love how vocal Taylor Wareheim is. You can see her in the huddle. You know, they just scored, but they're coming together as a team and kind of adjusting what can they do better. She's really a student of the game, which really is going to make her so lethal for this Carolina team. Junior from Hampstead, Maryland. So the Tar Heels 86 seconds away from a victory over Florida. Their first regular season home win in the Gators over the Gators in their last three tries. Levy 
Ladies team next in action Sunday against High Point. It's a four o'clock start. And we'll be on the call with Leah Secondo on the ACC network for that one. In-state matchup as Carolina meets High Point for the ninth team. Ninth time, eight nothing series advantage for the Tar Heels. That includes a 24-3 victory. February 14th of last year in the Furniture City. Possession won by the Tar Heels. And if they don't want to, they don't have to take another shot. Great hustle play by Kerrigan Miller. Really just Carolina, I'm so impressed with them, fighting till the last whistle. Up by six, you wouldn't know it. Late card, Emma Whiteman, all for the infraction for Florida. Kerrigan Miller will execute the restart for the Tar Heels. Kind of a microcosm of the day for the Florida Gators. 27 fouls. Definitely a lot of positives for Florida, but they need to get that cleaned up. Absolutely. Those 27 fouls have really led to a plentiful amount of Carolina possessions, and you can see it here. You know, you can't score if you don't have the ball, and I think Carolina does a good job of executing. False start on the Tar Heels. So possession back to Florida with 45 seconds left. I think if you're Florida, you know, take care of the ball in this transition. You can't let Carolina score in these last 30 seconds. You have an opportunity to score. Can they do it? Ashley Gonzalez already has a goal today. No major sense of urgency here for Florida, though. I'm surprised by that. With under 10 to go, you'd think they would put the ball in the back of the net. Cavanaugh misses wide. Ground ball pickup by Kayla Wood. And the veteran will seal the victory for the North Carolina Tar Heels. The number one team in the nation pulls away from number seven, Florida, after halftime. Carolina wins it 11-5 over the Gators, their first home win over Florida in the last three tries. 11-5 victory for the Tar Heels. Dana, what impressed you most by Carolina's performance today? I think Carolina proved why they're the number one team in the country this afternoon. You know, Hogan Ortega usually lead Carolina in points, and they didn't this afternoon, but that's okay because there were other members of the Carolina team that stepped up, and that's what makes them so lethal, and it's going to help them as they move through their season. Four goals from Scotty Rose Grani to lead the way for the Tar Heels. And Jenny Levy's team gets the job done, 11-5 over the Florida Gators. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on ACC Network, download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Dana Boyle, I'm Matt Krause. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your Friday. Carolina wins it 11-5.